A mirror hangs above a bent and broken sink. In a fierce discharge of masculine energy, someone has ripped half the faucet off. Hot water sprays from the base and steam covers the mirror. You cannot see yourself, just the outline of a man. Suddenly, you realize you have no memory of the face that awaits you there, underneath the soft vapor. As you slowly reach your hand towards the surface of the mirror, a bolt. You clearly have not thought this through. You won't like what you see there, and you will never unbecome it. Behold. You have no idea who this thing is, do you? Too late. You clearly have rigor mortis on your face. Oh wait, is that an expression? Are you trying to make an expression with that face? Why? Please stop. It's horrible. You're scaring yourself. You can't, can you? It's like it's not even voluntary anymore. You have worn that grin into your face and now it won't come off. What does it even mean? What is the emotion you're trying to convey? You are correct. It's too late. Like an image on film. The expression belongs to your primary motor cortex. It would take a minor neurological miracle for you to cease producing it. Like the rest of you, it comes from a bad place somewhere in the past. That's all you know for now. This fan has two chain pull switches. One ends in a tiny fan, the other in a light bulb. A truly horrific necktie has somehow attached itself to one of the blades. Or has it been consigned there as punishment? You feel as though this creature is your friend and wants to reattach itself to your neck so that you may continue your adventures together in this strange world. You swoop up and catch the tie. Snap. It's released from the blade. Warning, warning. The necktie is no longer contained. What you have in your hand is a fantastically colorful tie with four or five different patterns. The knot reminds you of a noose. stands broken in its frame. Cold wind blows in. The morning light hurts your eyes. It's hazy, but you see the ocean and some war-torn buildings. What do you mean, assess the damage? How would you do that? What are you even trying to do? You hear a jingle. Keys are clinking in the pocket of your... It says, whirling in rags, on the aluminium key ring. There is a single key on the ring. The number one is etched on it. It should open the door. Hello, officer. The 
young woman raises a cigarette to her lips. Uh, now? There's only one solution to this. You're a businessman. Because you're a police officer, sir. Okay, cool. I won't. She means it. She wouldn't defy authority, however sweaty and bloated it may look. First, I have to ask, are you okay, sir? You look like you're about to throw up. Can I bring you something? She's right. Something wants to come out through your mouth, but you can keep it down because your body does not control you. Sir, you've been here for three days. On official police business, as you put it. Couldn't say. In truth, so far, mostly drinking. Try the expression. Come on, why are you still doing this? Alcohol raises testosterone levels, especially in men. The levels remain elevated after inebriation ends and the pain begins. You see comfort. It's only natural. She puts out her cigarette. She looks back at you, a light glinting off her eyes. And now, it never stops. Goodbye. A man in his late twenties stands behind the counter, inspecting a stuffed seabird. As you approach, he gives you a sideways glance, then looks down again. That was disdain in his eyes. Even now he's purposely ignoring you. Oh no, you're a hero. A real hero cop. Am I? Or did you ride in? Take the body down, solve the murder, and not trash my hostel room? Oh, it's not? You're right, it's not. He has no respect for you personally, but this man sees himself as a law-abiding citizen, and you a representative of that law. He tries to avoid outright conflict. A competent work of taxidermy. The white and brown seabird lies among piles of coasters and drying mugs, one of its wings broken. The man is trying to mend it. Looks like the bird was ripped off the shield that was used to mount it, most likely on a wall. Something about it makes you feel bitter. Look, your buddy is over there. Why don't you go and talk to him, okay? He pretends not to hear you, concentrating on the bird instead. A bespeckled man in an orange bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor. Looks like he's waiting for someone. You. As you approach, he narrows his eyes and extends his hand in greeting. If an assault were launched on this building right now, if the windows came crashing down and the whole world descended upon you, this man would hurl himself in death's way to save you. You are sure of this, but why? Hello, I'm Kim Kitsuragi, Lieutenant, Prison 57. You must be from the 41st. You realize he's waiting for your name. This is your chance to come up with a really good name for yourself. 
Get creative. Conceptualize. Okay, then. It looks like we had a little scheduling error on Sunday. Saturday too, actually. Have you had time to talk to the manager here? If you don't mind, we should talk to him again. Ask him for a rundown of the area. Now that I'm here as well. I understand the scene is out back, right? It also wouldn't hurt to assure him the police are finally here. In full force, I mean. Have you mapped out the initial interviews? Good. But even if you haven't, we'll have time for that after we take a look at the coroner's case. Have you removed the dead body from the tree? Completely. Does that mean you took the body down from the tree? So, the body is still in the tree. This is the first time you detect a weariness in the lieutenant's voice. It is obvious he would have preferred for the body to no longer be in the tree. Where it has been hanging for seven days straight. We should go there as soon as we are done talking to the owner. After you, officer. If you're about to embark on an investigation, shouldn't you have a badge? You mean you don't have a badge? Losing your identification card is a serious matter. My vehicle has a shortwave. You can use it to report your badge missing. I advise you to try to locate it as quickly as possible. But getting the body down should still take precedence. Lieutenant Kitsuragi is now in your party. You can talk to him whenever by interacting with him. Shame. Whining about your back every time you bring out the measuring tape. Rene, you're a man with a fork in a world of soup. Please, let's just try to enjoy the game, alright? I'm trying.